Hey everybody, I am John Barker and welcome back to another episode of Here to Record Show and Tell. Today we're going to do something really cool and we're going to show you how to make a MIDI controller like this uh, Korg Nano Control 2 or other MIDI controllers. We're going to show you how they work with Wirecast. In this uh, video we're going to be looking at Wirecast 7 but this does work for Wirecast 6, I've tested that and I'm pretty sure it will work for some of the older versions too but uh, 6 and 7 this will definitely work for. I do recommend the Nano Control 2 um, but this will work for other MIDI devices as well. A few steps might change along the way, but it's pretty similar for those other devices. So looking at my uh, control board here, um, I have it set up, if I can show you, um, with all the buttons labeled. Hopefully you can see that. But anyway, it says take, auto, uh, record, stream, and then camera one, two, three, four. Um, and then over here I have a little break or intermission button. But basically I've programmed each of these buttons to do a specific thing within Wirecast. So I'm going to just show you how that all works now and uh, let's head to the computer. First thing you'll see here is I am on my personal website but this also is available on uh, Here to Record's website. You'll see a link to this below this video in the description. Click on that link and you'll find everything you need to buy which is the MIDI controller or maybe you already have one and you also need to buy a copy of Wirecast. Um, actually in this case I'm just using the demo version of Wirecast 7 because I've already paid for Wirecast 6, but uh, you can download those pieces of software as well. And on the website, you'll see the other things you need to download. So, all this uh, happens, I should give 100% credit to TTFN TV. They have created the original uh, code and the original program that makes all this work. Um, all I've done is nothing really, other than just uh, tweaked it a little for my use, um, but the credit goes to them 100%. TTFN MIDI is the original uh, the original software and you'll see a link to that in the original blog or my blog post as well um, but you'll have to go over and download my tweaked version of TTFM MIDI it is the same software but it also includes um, a slightly different uh, controller layout for the Nano Control 2 which is the model I have the original video had the Nano Control 1 but this is the updated Nano Control so I have just added a uh, an updated version of that uh, piece of script um, you'll also need to download the Korg control editor or whatever your MIDI control editor uh, may be. In this case, obviously I'm using the Korg one because that's what I have, um, but you'll also need to get your own if you're not using the Korg uh, MIDI controller. And finally, you'll need to download a program called MIDI Pipe. So basically what happens is you press a button on the, uh, the MIDI controller, it gets sent to the computer over USB, which is then um, interpreted by MIDI pipe, which is then sent to TTFN MIDI, and then that is sent to Wirecast. It's a little bit of a long process, but once you have it all set up, it'll all work really well. So that's all the, uh, all the software you need to download. Um, so let's just head over to this uh, page here. I have my TTFN MIDI uh, file downloaded, so that's what, that's what will be downloaded whenever you, when you click that download link. And in here, we have a few things. So this is just an image of what um, my buttons have been set up to do. Obviously you can choose whatever you want, but this is my particular layout. Um, this file here is the, uh, the actual Korg sample layout. So if you've downloaded, like I said over here, the uh, Korg control editor, you can open this up. And um, in here, you will see the way my uh, setup is is set up so these buttons um, they set to these uh, note numbers and that all corresponds to something that I'll get to a little bit later um, but just leave it as it is right now um, and then you can learn how I've set it up and then it'll be easier for you to edit it later down the line so let's take a look now at TTFN MIDI and yes I will open that this is what it looks like um, it's a simple little uh, program which lets the uh, MIDI data shows up at the top in a status. It's all very nice um, and very well laid out so that you can see exactly what's happening, what's been sent from your MIDI controller into your computer. Um, and finally, uh, if you downloaded MIDI pipe, then this last uh, file will open up for you. And um, I'll just let that open. So here we go, this is what the MIDI pipe, um, I think it's called a pipe, so this is called a pipe over here. Um, so what happens in this case, I've called it Wirecast Setup. The MIDI input device is the Nano Control 2, and you set that to whatever device you have. A-list um, 
honestly, this some of this stuff is a little further than I know how it works, but I just know how this works. So leave a list as it is, and then the Apple script trigger, and that's basically what talks to um, what talks to TTFM MIDI. So just leave that in there. Um, you can also build this up yourself, but basically, if you open that sample file that I've added here, then you should have no problem just uh, making it work. So. First of all, if I open up Wirecast, I have it open here on the side, and let's just hide it over a little so I can see TTFN MIDI uh, in the background. And what I'm able to do, if I just head over to uh, my actual MIDI controller, I can just press a button. So in this case, I'll just press the take button. And you can see, if I press it a few times, in TTFN MIDI, then Go Pressed has came up. It's telling me the uh, 176, the MIDI data here, uh, note number 45, and then right now it's zero, but if I press it, you'll see that it goes to 127, so that just means that it's registering the button. If you get anything else in here, let's say it says error detected, that means that something along the way is not set up properly. Um, it could be the note number, it could be the wirecast configuration, um, but basically if it says what you want it to say in here. So in this case, I press the take button or the go button, it's the same It's the same thing. I press that go button and TTFN MIDI is listening for that and it says go. So I think the best thing for us to do is just to take a look at the blog post one more time and I'll just scroll down a little further. This original blog post basically explains how to do it. Um, not dissimilar to this video right now. If I head down to this, this, uh, this long table, you can see all the main controls for controlling Wirecast. So let's just look at that uh, take, cut, or go button I was just talking about. Um, so take, cut is here. That is the main Wirecast action that you want to do. So I want to do a take and a cut. Um, assign type, control change. This just refers to some stuff we'll see in a second in the, uh, what's it called, the Korg controller. Let me just open that up again. Yeah open up the sample layout. So that take button is the very far button on the side here. If you can see that, take button, and then corresponding button within the editor is this one right here. So as you can see here, assign type, control change, button behavior, momentary, CC note number 45, the off value is zero, the on value is 127. So you will have seen some of these numbers already I just mentioned. In the table, like I said, control change, momentary, 450127. So if you want to set up any of the buttons to do what you want it to do, all you have to do is follow along with this table and uh, you'll have no problem. So let's head back over to the uh, editor, uh, the Korg uh, layout editor. And I can see that button um, is all set up properly to do go. And uh, let's just do the same for a different button. So let's say we want uh, this button right here, the stop button, We'll just pretend like it doesn't say stop there, but we want it to start a recording and stop a recording when we press it. So during your show, you have a button that actually you can press to start recording at the start and press to stop recording at the end. So that button is the stop button. And inside of the uh, layout editor, we can see there's the stop button. So I'll just click on that. And right now it's not set up, set up for anything. It's got no assignment. Let's head back over to my post about it. So we, we find the record start stop button. We set that to be a control change and we set that to be toggle. So let's do control change, toggle. And then finally, I'll just see the CC note number, which is 44. And I'll just change that to 44. There we go. Just to write that data, you just have to go to communication, write scene, and then that will be now stored on your uh, device. And the reason this is set to a toggle button as opposed to a momentary button. If you imagine that you press the take button and all you wanted to do is for a moment, take, that's it. Um, the same goes for a camera button. If you press the camera button, you just want that to happen and then um, and that's it. As opposed to a record button where it should have two states, the recording state and the stop recording state. Um, that's what's really nice about these MIDI, or MIDI controllers is that they have backlights. So in this case, I can press this button to start the recording I'll press it now, and you can see, just about see, hopefully, um, that the light will have stayed on. If I can cover up the, uh, the sunlight a little, you can probably see, yeah, there you go. You can see the light is on, 
and then if I press it again, it goes off. So that means that there's a, there's a toggle option. So when I press on, I know that that lights on and it's recording and I press it again, that lights off and it's stopped recording. And I can just see, um, I can just see that over in uh, TTFN MIDI and in Wirecast as well, I can see that happening. So if I press that stop or that record button within TTFN MIDI, I can see recording on and on Wirecast, I can also see that it's actually started a recording. And if I press the button again, you'll see that it stops that recording and recording off in TTFM MIDI. So that's as simple as that. That's how you set up a button to, um, to start and stop your recording. It's really nice that the light stays on the whole time, so you know it's definitely recording. And then at the end of the, uh, end of the show, end of the performance, whatever it may be, press that button again, the light goes off, it stops recording instead of Wirecast. So that's the, simples, that's the simple part anyway. Um, of the, uh, the main controls. All the rest of these work kind of the same. The streaming start stop button, as you can see, looks uh, just as similar as the record. It's just got a different note number, um, but that's easy to, easy to set up as well. I have this button right here set up for streaming. So if I press that, it will start a stream. Obviously I haven't actually set up my RTMP server, but if I had, a, it would start that stream. And then I can press that button again and it would stop the stream. Now let's go a little further into detail and let's talk about actually setting up cameras so that some of these buttons can be pressed and they can queue up cameras. So looking back at my table one more time, I can see shot one, two, three, and four. They're all set up for numbers 33, 34, 35, 36. And if I head back over to the uh, core controller, I can see right here on these same buttons, 33, 34, 35, 36. And those correspond to these bottom row buttons on the uh, controller. So that's 33, 34, 35, 36. So if I was to press any one of these buttons, it would set uh, shot one, shot two, shot three, shot four um, on the preview window of my Wirecast, uh, uh, what do you call it, document. <laughs> um, so if I just set up my file and I say, let's set up a, a few different shots, a shot of me looking in the camera, Let's do, let's do four shots all together. And you can do up to eight shots with this layout or with my current uh, configuration. But I'll set up those four shots. And now it's important that you name these properly. That's, that's where this all comes into play. So the TTFM MIDI, it's talking to Wirecast, but it's talking in a very specific way to Wirecast. It's not saying, uh, to Wirecast, I want you to turn camera one on um, based on whatever camera is on a layer. It's actually telling the shot, the specific shot with a specific name uh, to go on to the preview. So you need to be very careful to name the shots properly. Um, that's why in this original blog post, Wirecast shot name is not just a reference, it's actually the name you want to give. So shot one has to be called shot one. Shot one is called shot one in my uh, example here. Shot two here needs to be called shot two, so I'll just change that to shot two. Same goes for shot three. Oh, I closed that. And shot four. So it's really important that those are called what they need to be called. And then I think the best thing I can do is just, um, let's just do something fun just so there's a difference between the shots. So shot two is gonna look like that. Shot three will be, um, that doesn't make any sense. Let's do a really scaled up version of me. There we go, that looks, that looks odd. Okay, so shot one is normal, shot two is tiny, shot three is weirdly scaled up, a bit like a Snapchat filter. And shot four, um, let's make it a little more interesting and let's put, um, let me see, a solid color. Let's put a blue over top of it. Okay, so that, there's an example, a really crude and terrible, but an example of four varying shots. So if everything is set up properly, which it should be, if I press these four buttons, one, two, three, four, um, on my MIDI controller, then shot one, shot two, shot three, shot four will appear in the preview window. So now I'll press through all the shots. Shot one, and you can see in the TTFN TV MIDI up here, shot one on. That didn't do anything because shot one was already on, but if I shot two, 
then shot two goes on and you can see the tiny little version of me there. Shot three, I'm pressing the buttons on the MIDI controller here. It goes into that weird version. I like that one best. Um, and then shot four is the blue. So I can just flick through these uh, shots here and you can see that that is how you control the uh, wire cast with this MIDI controller. It's working really well. It's fairly responsive. There is uh, probably about a less than a second delay. There's, there's definitely a delay, but it's a very, very small delay. And if I just hit the, uh, the take button, then you can see, I'll, I'll give you a better shot than that. I hit take, and there you go, you can see the, um, the shot going live. I'll just change this to cut. Let's try that one. And you can see during the show how you might actually use this as, a, um, as an actual useful hardware switcher for your uh, Wirecast setup. Yeah, so an extra thing I like to do is to set up um, the auto live feature. So inside of Wirecast, there's uh, an option that if you click any of your shots, they will automatically go live. Right now we're set up to the preview live uh, switching. So you have to preview it and then press a button to make it go live. But auto live, and it's uh, this little option down here, will automatically go live. There's an option up in the um, switch settings, auto live, and now you can see that little red icon is on. Before it was off, but now it's back on again. And that just tells you whatever you click down here will actually go live. Uh, let's change this back to cut again. So whatever I click on is going live. Um, a nice thing to do is to actually set up this toggle on your MIDI controller. So I'm going to turn that off. So you can see the little red icon is off. And then if I head back over one more time to the blog post, auto on off, that is what that refers to. Control change toggle 46. So heading back to my uh, control editor, I can see that I have set up an auto live um, button. If I can remember where I put that, 46 is right here. So that will turn auto on and off, 46 is a toggle. And then I can head back over to Wirecast and you can see that if I press that 46 button, which is this one I've set up here, that little red um, icon will go on and off to tell you that the toggle between auto live on and auto live off is, uh, is happening. And you can also see it, of course, on the TTFM MIDI um, display there, auto shot switching on, auto switch, shot switching off. And one more thing is you can see, if I can show you it one more time, on the um, nano editor or nano MIDI control, you can see the little light toggles on and off because we've set it up for toggle mode. I'll turn it off again. Um, so now if I switch between my cameras, auto is off, but if I turn auto on and I switch between my cameras, you can see that it's all just happening automatically. So I press the button and the shot goes live. That's a great way to operate a camera at the same time as you're switching. I find that really useful to put my hand on the buttons and I'm moving a camera around and I can press the buttons and at the corner of my eye, I can just see the shots switching and I can see it right now. I can just see the shots switching so I can keep my uh, camera movement going but I can see that I'm actually switching my program. That's really cool. Um, that's a nice feature to have and you can always turn it back off again and go back to the good old classic uh, preview program uh, switching which is nice as well. And that's pretty much the basics of getting this all to work. Um, you can see how powerful a little MIDI device like this actually is with controlling Wirecast. And I really, really, really recommend if you're gonna do Wirecast, especially if you're running it by yourself, that you should have some sort of uh, control interface to use with it. Actual buttons come in so handy whenever you're trying to, like I said, operate a camera at the same time or if the stream is giving you problems, you always wanna have a way that you can use your computer. Um, you, you, you can even use a, like Safari at the same time as you're pressing buttons on this, and you can be confident that it's still talking to Wirecast, it's still switching your cameras, and the show is still going on, even though you're busy trying to reply to a text message because things are falling apart down at the stage, or whatever the case may be. So I really recommend picking up a uh, device like this. You can get a bunch of other different devices, big pads, squares that you can press and change cameras. This one, the buttons are tiny and there's lots of buttons. I don't use half of these buttons. So, I mean, even for me, this is probably too many, uh, too many options. So I could have went for a slightly different 
controller but basically a MIDI controller and as long as you can edit the buttons on there which you almost always can you can uh, set this up to work with TTFM MIDI and you can set it up to work with Wirecast, Wirecast 7, Wirecast 6 and it should work great for you. If you do have any questions or any concerns or any thoughts or any uh, problems with this please let us know in the comments. We can uh, get back to you, set up a Skype and see if we can figure out what the issue is and see if we can get you up and rolling. Um, most of the MIDI devices work quite well and uh, they are all pretty similar. Sometimes it's a little more tricky to figure out how it actually works, but we can set up a chat and see if we can fix it for you. And uh, let us know if you're using one of these and it's working good for you. Let us know on Twitter or Instagram or wherever because we love to see them in action. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again in the next episode of Show and Tell. And don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. End the show.